Say, do you remember that commercial review special I did a few years back? Of course you don't. Well, since I can't think of any other ideas for videos at the moment, I decided to review some more commercials, but in a different kind of format than in the other video. So we're all going to be looking at some random commercials that I've randomly chosen from YouTube, and I'm going to like it, dislike it, or be terrified by it. Whatever it might be. So, let's start things off with some Transformers toy commercials. Hey, boy. The Transformers War has invaded our world, and the Earth is no match for the evil Decepticons. Led by Megatron's hunger for power, they will destroy anything in their way. Disguised as Earth vehicles, Optimus Prime, and the heroic Autobots. Yeah, great job not including Ironhide. You know, Ironhide. The one character most people watching the movie actually kind of like. The one with the guns. The one with the muscle. The one who would leap first into battle. Even after killing a few humans to do it. The parents are very irritating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I take them out? Ironhide, you know we don't harm humans. What is with you? Well, I'm just saying we could. It's an option. Why did I continuously watch this movie and Revenge of the Fallen when they were on DVD? Because I was dumb back then and I didn't know any better, that's why. The heroic Autobots have the power to protect the world from the destruction of the Decepticons. The battle's beginning. Which side are you on, Autobot or Decepticon? Why would you ask a question like that? Which will you choose, Autobots or Decepticons? I mean, it's pretty much asking you, which side would you choose? The faction of heroes who want to protect all of humanity and the universe? Or the faction who wants to use Earth's technology to take over or even destroy the whole universe? It's such a hard decision, you know. The Transformers battle for the Allspark rages on! The Allspark's power to turn vehicles into Transformers robots! So please tell me they've made toy versions of the Xbox 360 bot and Mountain Dew Septicon. Please tell me that's his real name. The Allspark's power to turn vehicles into Transformers robots has created new Decepticons, Stockade, and Incinerator, with one thing on their mind, destruction. Yeah, Incinerator here is showing off its destructive power by destroying... obvious... Chocolates. Is this really all they can use for the set? Just chocolates? But the Earth has a new Autobot on its side, as Landmine prepares to take a stand. The Decepticons have him outnumbered, but a hero comes to the rescue! Nightwatch Optimus Prime! You know, even in the mind of a kid, why would you spend your hard-earned pocket money on an Optimus Prime figure that you've already owned, just in a different color? I don't know, maybe you were imagining that it was Ultra Magnus or something. The battle's far from over. Which side are you on? Autobot or Decepticon? Transformers figures each sold separately. Oh dear lord, look at what the Allspark has done. It's turned all the Transformers... Blue. Blue everything. Blue everywhere. I am Optimus Prime. A new Decepticon threat has arrived. Devastator. Made up of six constructed cards with an evil form of teamwork. They convert and combine into the ultimate enemy. Well, it sure is a shame you can't transform these individual vehicles into their individual robot modes. Cheapskates. His size is unbelievable. His power unstoppable. Devastator can only be defeated by the combined power of the Autobots. Well, actually, Devastator can be defeated by a Deus Ex Machina OP cannon from a ship millions of miles away from Devastator and by hitting his... Enemy scrotum! Transformers Prime. Oh boy, Transformers Prime! The Decepticons continue to threaten Earth, but the last remaining Autobots stand united. With new Prime designs, Transformers like you've never seen before. One shall stand, one shall fall. The battle is yours. Yeah, it's all epic and great and all, but, um, have you noticed one problem with this advert? We don't see the figures transforming into their respective vehicle modes. Not even once. We never even see the vehicle modes. Well, okay, I tell a lie. We see them for like a split second, and we don't see them throughout the rest of the advert. Wasn't the whole marketing purpose for the Transformers is to... You know, transform their robots in disguise? It's in the friggin' name. 
God. The director of this advert had only one job. One single simple job. Transformers Prime figures, each sold separately. The Transformers will return after these messages. Equestria Girls! Oh God, no. Pinkie Pie, Applejack, Fluttershy, Rarity, Twilight Sparkle, and Rainbow Dash. If it weren't for them doing the roll call of names, I would have never have figured out those were the rainbows. Seriously, the dolls are that inaccurate. Just look at them, they're clearly Monster High ripoffs. Look at the lips, look at the chins, cheeks, look at the eyes. Although, we do have one massive advantage over Barbie. Articulation! Equestrian girls! Come on, you couldn't even use the movie designs in the two second opening of the advert? You just had to use these knockoff designs? Oh. Uh... What is up with Rarity's face? Is it me or does it look like she's derping a bit? Oh no way, derping! I see what you did there! Things may come and things may go. And who the hell are these? Is that Bonbon? Bon? Is that Lyra? The hell did they do to your hair? Is that meant to be Sour Sweet? She wasn't even in Rainbow Rocks! I have no idea who you're supposed to be. You're not like someone's OC, which was only created in only two minutes. Introducing all new Equestria Girls dolls. Sweetie Drops, Lyra Heartstrings, Cheerily. Is that really meant to be Cheerily? Oh yes, yes, they, they look phenomenally similar. They look, they, they look very identical. They're, they're like twins to me. Sweetie Drops, Lyra Heartstrings. Lyra Heartstrings? Do you see a double E? Well, I don't. I see a Y. It's Lyra Heartstrings. The announcer had one job. One single simple job. She probably got fired, along with the person who directed that Transformers Prime advert. Lyra Heartstrings, Cheerily, Amethyst Star, and Rose Luck. Wait, Rose Luck? That background character in the movies? They seriously made an EG doll of a background character. If that's the case, then where the hell is my derpy toy? Just a note here, I might be a brony, but I never collect the merchandise. They were birthday gifts for my brother, okay? Amethyst Star and Rose Luck. Wait, Amethyst Star? I don't think we've ever seen her in any Equestria Girls content. Not in the movies, not in the shorts, not in the 50 or 20 minute specials, no nothing. So if they can make toys on background characters in the EG series, or characters that haven't even been in the series yet, then how come they didn't make a doll of Principal Cinch? Oh, speaking of friendship games... Equestria Girls! Friendship games are finally here! Applejack, Fluttershy, Archers, cheer! Oh, no, 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 don't, don't rap. D do anything other than rap, okay? Applejack, Fluttershy, Archers, cheer! Rainbow Dash, Sunset Shimmer, Motocross time! I wonder how many takes that girl did just to say Sunset Shimmer that fast. Rainbow Dash, Sunset Shimmer, Motocross time! Sunset Shimmer, Sunset Shimmer, Sunset Shimmer, Summer Shimmer, Summer Shimmer, Summer Shimmer! Equestria Girls! Can I go high? Come on, cheer! Oh, now you use the movie style designs. Well, it took you like, what, two years, but you finally did it. What took you so long? Can I go on high? Come on, cheer! Friendship games are finally here! Get pumped as DJ Pwn3 spins! Friendship win! Chater, you can't just skip a line and call it a rhyme. You can't call that a rhyme either. Never fear, Gromit. With the cinematic snack matic these Jacob's Green Crackers won't go to waste. You know, I wonder why it took Wallace and Gromit this long to promote Jacob's Crackers. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they were in the series ever since A Grand Day Out. The Great Escape! The Hambusters! <laughs> Are there any movie title puns that you want to squeeze in, Wallace? Oh no! It's Apocalypse Chow! There we go, just enough to make things rather cheesy. But it's Wallace and Gromit, you can't even hate them for doing something like that. Speaking of which, it's rather strange that from all of these combinations you can do with these Jacob Crackers, not one of them involves cheese. You know, the number one thing people normally put on these crackers? The stuff that Wallace and Gromit had to go to the moon to get when they were out, instead of just going to Tesco. Or, it might be cream cheese underneath the egg and the salmon here. 
No, oh, just need a bit of fine tuning, eh, lad? Jacob's cream crackers, cracking with anything. Oh, really? Anything? Say, like, um, chocolate spread? Pickle? Spinach? Go! Ooh, I've smashed it from it. Do something. Oh. Some fiddler on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. You know, you've got to applaud Ardman for putting this much effort, time and just love into the animation for just a 30 second end power advert. I mean, not just for movies or for Shaun the Sheep, but for 30 second adverts. You've got to applaud them for going the extra mile here. Hosting the World Cup in 2018 would be fantastic for everyone, especially Britain's businesses. And, uh, where are we right now? I mean, it's 2018 now, um, are we going to be hosting the World Cup or aren't we? I don't know shit about football, so you're going to have to tell me. And I doubt if I'd understand if you even tell me. Wow! It's cold! Stoke it up, lad! Wow, you have a mad ditzy inventor inventing all these machines, and yet they're still being powered by coal and a massive old-timey boiler. Wow, are these two behind the times or aren't they? Hotter, Grummit! Um, why aren't you wearing a towel? Huh? Oh! E excuse me, sons. <laughs> Which ones? Hmm, new boiler, lad. That'll save us some pennies. Uh, um, I don't think you're going to get away with a joke like that. Sorry. Thanks for your message, pal. Crafty Croft. Oh, fuck yeah, Cocoa Pops. God, I loved these adverts as a kid. Look how catchy the music is. Thanks for your message, pal. Crafty Croft. I'm surprised nobody ever talks about these Coco Pops adverts. Look at the animation. Look at the catchy music. It's all so great and nostalgic. I'm surprised nobody ever talks about it. We rescued them and it made Croc mad! Yes! He chased us hard. Things were looking bad! Seriously, I like someone who have grown up with these adverts to make a remix or a modern day rendition of the music used in these adverts. I mean, it's just so catchy and... Oh, why didn't anybody ever make a remix of this? Thanks for helping us track them down! Cause we'd rather have a bowl of go go pops! Now that is how you do a serial catchphrase. Yeah, screw tricks are for kids, and they're great! This is the one we need to pay more attention to, because it's really great. We'd rather have a bowl of go go pops! <laughs> Coming soon, a super new chocolatey surprise! Oh, this is Nostalgia Central! I used to be excited as hell when I saw this as a kid. I mean, look at this. There's a giant thing heading towards all the main characters. We have no idea what it is, or what it's going to do. We don't know if it's a massive boulder heading towards our characters, if it's a giant UFO coming to destroy the world, we don't even know what it is. All we know is that it's big, it's epic, it's exciting, and we really want to know what the hell it is. Too bad it took us a fortnight to finally realise what it was. There was something incredible in the sky! Chocolate meteors were rushing by! Oh shit, this is going to end horribly. Or maybe not, since it's chocolate meteors. They're all going to die in a shower of chocolate. I wasn't scared because the magic words I knew. Coco Rock! A new chocolate surprise for me and you! Crunchy Chop Rocks and Soft Chop Center Rocks! You get both crunchy and soft chop! Oh, now that is how you introduce a new line of cereal. You make it look like an apocalyptic event, and then you use your own creativity and imagination to turn it into something delicious and enjoyable. That is how you introduce a new line of cereal. All hail Coco Rocks. Did you know that there are all sorts of fruit and vegetables at McDonald's?
McDonald's that count as one of your five a day? Oh, I remember these McDonald's adverts. I used to recite them all the time. Don't ask, I was a really bored kid. Did you know that McDonald's carrot sticks count as one of your five a day? Mmm. I love carrots. Oh yeah, this is a very nice image to show to kids. Cannibalism! Wake up, the day has just begun. Let's all get down and have some fun. Oh, this is a really bad house design. I mean, these are houses for palm bears, little light potato chip snacks, and uh, they live in houses that are shaped and looking like potatoes. Yeah, that's kind of like if a human being lived in a house made entirely out of muscles and flesh. Wake up, the day has just begun. Let's all get down and have some fun. We are the Palm Bears and we're really nice. Later, Hi, Tim Wernall. Oh, I thought we were done with cannibalism. Apparently, these little palm bears are so cheerful and excited, and they're singing happily about being eaten alive. I mean, seriously, you just take the lyrics of the song used in this advert, and you tell me if this sounds a little bit cannibal. Um, what's with the music? What's with those close shots of their crotches? Is this a travel booking advert or is it something else? Wait, wait, what? Okay, this just raises too many questions. One, how the hell did these women make it to Tracy Island? Isn't Tracy Island supposed to be highly top secret so that bandits like The Hood wouldn't get a hold of their technology? And two, why would Jeff Tracy be just perfectly okay with letting these Woman in bikinis swim in a swimming pool, which is also the launching hatch of Thunderbird 1. Why would he be okay with it? Travel Care, the travel agent that tells you what the brochure won't. Hey, can we turn that music down a bit? Oops, wrong button. What now? Now we hit the hut. What, you're not gonna get the pod back? You're not gonna get Thunderbird 4 back? What, you're just gonna fuck off to Pizza Hut and then get the pod back later? Just be lucky it won't sink into the sea once you get back. Yes, John? Hey guys, you haven't forgotten about me, have you? Coming right up. For a Thunderbird's meal, hit the hut. You know, it kind of makes you wonder how the hell John is able to survive in Thunderbird 5 for so long. I mean, has he got a year's supply of food and supplies up there? I know in later episodes of the show, John is seen on Tracy Island and his role is replaced by Alan and some such, but it does kind of make you wonder. Hit the hut. Hey, 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 hey! Get a Thunderbird's cup, a kid's soft drink, and a kid's cheese and tomato pizza for two ninety nine. You know, why were the Thunderbirds suddenly popular all over again in the 90s? I don't get it. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Thunderbirds are go. Go, Thunderbirds! Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Uh, I don't think now would be the good time to have a Kit Kat. I mean, your international rescue. You should go and save whoever's in danger. Or are you just gonna leave them to die where they are, in whatever accident or emergency they're in, and just sit back, have a cup of tea, have a Kit Kat, and smack your lips eternally? Have a Kit Kat. <laughs> A new age has dawned, and the world will never be the same again. Or at 
least the Sonic series won't be the same again. Feel the rush of blistering next-gen speeds. The freedom of vast, awesome environments. Where's the casino area? Where's the beach resort? Where's Tails House? Where's the Master Emerald Shrine? Sonic the Hedgehog. Enter the Sonic Age. Hey, you know, I exist. What about me? Nobody likes you. Forget who's the real villain here? You, Sonic Milk Ice, from Topper, multicolored milk ice filled with a jelly rod and coated with exploding shock rocks. Can this narrator talk any slower? New Sonic the Hedgehog Milk Ice from Topper! And coated with exploding shock rocks! Uh. If you're leading kids to believe that that's what a Sonic Milk Ice will do, then I don't think kids should be eating it. Sonic the Hedgehog Milk Ice from Topper! It's truly shocking! Okay, now I'm positive kids shouldn't be eating it. Alright, that's it guys. Come on, here we go. Holidays. Yeah. I don't know where they get the energy. What's that? Uh, that's definitely not Jaleel White. What's that? It's that stuff the kids eat. Mmm. Wow. Race you to level 10. You do know that's not what we call the final level, right? We don't call it level 10. We call it, you know, death egg zone. In fact, death egg zone isn't even the 10th level. It's the 11th level. Did these people seriously think Sky Chase Zone and Wing Fortress Zone were literally the same level? Cause they aren't. Level 10? Well done, Max! And how did the dad know that was the final level? Mmm! Wow! Uh, yeah, that's definitely the thing that will get Sonic and Tails all hyped up with energy. Chocolate pudding. Oh no, wait, I forget. Sonic eats loads of chili dogs every day, and somehow he's still the fastest thing alive. Sorry, I forgot. What can I get you, folks? Green egg and ham, please. Come on, honey, I'm busy. I like green eggs and ham. And speaking of things I don't like eating... Chloe, got any green eggs and ham? Sold the last ones to the cat in the hat. <laughs> I have that. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. No, I don't want to eat green eggs and ham. If the yolk can do that... Oh, God, no. You know, this is making me wonder why that guy at the end of the book said he likes green eggs. If this is what they can do. Green yolks that can have a mind of its own and can tell you messages. No, oh, no, I definitely don't want to eat it. Oh. Ugh. Yeah, to all of those people who keeps bashing the 2003 Can the Hat movie, look, can we all agree that this Can the Hat costume is a lot more scarier than the Mike Myers costume? I mean, at least with Mike Myers, you can tell there was an actual person in that costume. What kind of person thought this creepy animatronic was suitable for children? A new universe of theme parks, resorts, and nightlife. Universal Studios Escape. Are you ready? What's this supposed to be? Is this an underwear commercial? Is it Heinz? Or Fruit of the Loop? Or is it... Uh... Uh... Little Baby's Ice Cream whatever I had for tea. <coughs> uh, there goes those 
next style than fried chicken steaks. <coughs> there goes the tortilla wraps I wrapped them in. Yeah. Here comes the last. <laughs> okay, I can't tell if that's the cheese or the barbecue sauce. Well, it sure is a good thing to know that I'll be having semen flavored ice cream for afters. Wait, what the c? Who the hell came up with this and thought that it was a good idea? Or for that matter, who the hell allowed this onto TV? If it was ever made onto TV, which I doubt it even did since it's so. Ugh. I. Who made this? Seriously, who made the. the uh. Oh. Little Baby's Ice Cream? You mean the same people who made. There's good reason for my glistening skin. And how my pores are so clean. I eat little babies. It keeps me young. It keeps me light on my feet. When you eat little babies, you wink and nod with great enthusiasm. This is a special time. Little babies ice cream. Ice cream is a feeling. <laughs> Enjoy those nightmares, kids. Don't say I didn't warn you. Oh god, we need to put on something else, more child-friendly, to get this stuff out of my mind. Um, uh... Mario Kart, here we go. Mario Kart 64, new Whoa! Whoa, look at this! Oh god, wow, look at this! You know, this advert is seriously making Mario Kart 64 look a lot more epic and action-packed and detailed as it actually is. Mario Kart 64, Brazilians, Brits, Chinese. Uh... Race players from around the world with Nintendo DS Wi Fi connection in Mario Kart DS. Okay. If I was one of those people in that crowd, I would be like, what the hell is this guy doing, sitting on a toilet, sitting in the nude, in public, in a busy street, and how the hell did he get here? And if I was the person sitting on the toilet playing Mario Kart DS, I'd be like, how the ruddy hell did I end up here? I'm only playing a Mario Kart game, nothing extraterrestrial or anything, just Mario Kart. Mario Kart DS, now also available in a special edition pack. No thanks. Still online. It's not about beating me, it's about beating my dad, alright? Folks, can't let my dad win. Oh, what a start. God, it looks like he's been practicing. Get <laughs> you can, sonny boy. Watch this one. Right, he's got ya, he's got ya. Come on, come on, I've got to win this. Wait, I've got a blue shell, I've got a blue shell. Wait. Okay, these people might be part of the general public, but I like to think these people are gods. Why is that exactly? Well, because they are able to complete an entire cup, and from the look of things, it's 150cc by using the motion controls. I mean, when I continuously played Mario Kart Wii as a kid, I always used the motion controls, and I couldn't for the life of me get a single cup in 150cc with said motion controls. Or at the very least, not a gold one. And when I replayed the game on my Wii U a few weeks ago, I realized why I struggled with 150cc as a kid. Because the motion controls are shit. I don't know why it took me until now to realize that the Wii remote and the nunchuck are much easier to use than the motion controls. And how is it that Anton Deck of all people can use the motion controls better than me? Oh. Oh, no, no, no. This is definitely the wrong time to reference those two. I'm just gonna move on. Race online against family and friends on Mario Kart Wii. We now return to the Transformers. 
We can now bring you the latest pictures of the new Decepticon planes. Wow, I like the extra mile they went with this advert. This seriously looks like a documentary. We can now bring you live footage from the open desert in some place in America. I don't exactly know where, but we now see two Decepticon planes and vehicles decades ahead of its time. We see the Decepticon warrior Cyclonus and his armada, and the leader of the sweeps himself, Scourge. If there are any Autobots watching this, be warned. Transformers will not Cyclonus and Scourge are the most advanced Decepticons yet! Yeah, Cyclonus and Scourge are the most advanced Decepticons yet. And where the hell is Galvatron? You know, the new Decepticon leader who can destroy an entire Cybertronium from just one blast of his cannon mode? Where's he? Back on Cybertron, the Autobots have created three new warriors! Um, Hot Rod, Cup, and Blur were not created by Autobots on Cybertron, exactly. They just all appeared from out of nowhere, just like every single other character introduced in the show. Cup, experienced in battle. Blur, he's fast. <laughs> Great way to show off Blur there. Just throw him off a cliff and crashing on his side. Yeah, that'll convince the kids to buy Blur. Hey, look at me, I'm the fastest Autobot ever created. I can go so, so fast. Just watch me go over this cliff and... <laughs> okay, this is really embarrassing. This is not the best way to introduce me. The Decepticons' days are numbered. Well, they would be numbered if someone like, say, Ultra Magnus was there. I mean, where's he? Along with Galvatron, where are they? Oh, wait, here they are. The Autobots have a new leader, troop carrier, and born fighter. He's not exactly a born fighter, since, you know, he's a robot. He's more likely built ready, built for battle, since he's the robot. Also, Ultra Magnus is not the leader of the Autobots. Well, okay, he was briefly in the movie, but why did you have to promote Hot Rod instead of Rodimus Prime? And Galvatron is the new leader of the Decepticons, Laser Cannon and Fearsome Warrior. <laughs> What's up with that noise? Is that something his laser makes? Did Frank Welker do that, especially for the toy? This is Metroplex, Autobot City. Earth's last line of defense. You know, one advantage the UK adverts have over the American adverts is that we don't have little kids screaming out Autobot names or attack phrases. We just let the narration and the toy usages do the talking for us. Robots in disguise from Hasbro. Say, did you know Transformers Generation 1 also had PSAs? And that they only made five of them? And all of them were ripped straight out of G.I. Joe? You know, life jacket's good protection. Yeah, like seatbelts in a car. And accidents can happen in a life jacket's good protection. Like seatbelts in a car. Nice bike. Maybe we could borrow it? No, that's stealing. I'll ask for permission later. Nice car. Should we borrow it? Nah, that's stealing. <laughs> Come on, I'll ask for permission later. You don't have reflectors. They tell drivers where you are. I see what you mean. You don't have reflectors. They tell drivers where you are. I see what you mean. Seriously, they're complete rip-offs. I mean, word-for-word rip-offs. I'm running away from home. My parents are mean. Where will you go? Oh, I'm not sure, but I'll show them. I'm running away from home. My parents are mean. Where will you go? I'm not sure, but I'll show them. Isn't it better to try to solve problems instead of running away from them? I could try talking to my parents again. Yeah, tell them how you feel. Isn't it better to try to solve problems instead of running away from them? Maybe I could try talking to my parents again. Yeah, tell them how you feel. Even the now we know and knowing is half the battle. 
They use that in the PSAs. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Now I know. And knowing is half the battle. Now I know. And knowing is half the battle. The Transformers! But to be fair, these PSAs do actually work better when you use Transformers characters for certain things. I mean, Sea Spray helping out someone without a life jacket is more believable than whoever the hell this is. I've never seen G.I. Joe or Action Force. <laughs> if you ask me, it's really smart that they use Power Glide for this PSA. Hi guys, can I skate with you? Nah, you're just a girl. <laughs> Uh, did somebody mention a girl? Hey, I know a lot about girls. Yeah, I know, I know I'm an alien robot from another planet, but, uh, uh, I have a really great relationship with human women. Uh, yeah, I know, it might sound very questionable and very controversial, but, uh, uh, yeah, I just want to know all these citizens on this planet, okay? I just want to get to know them better. Even though we Autobots might not be on this planet for very long, considering we don't know how the war is going to break out and all, but, uh... Uh... Um... Hmm... Uh... Why don't you let her try skateboarding? Uh, you might be surprised on what she does. I mean, I'd sure be surprised. I mean, uh, I've seen what human women can do. They are, they're really, uh, athletic and, uh, great and, uh, uh... uh just let her do it. But I think the best usage of these Transformers PSAs is definitely the one where they say not to steal. I mean, in the G.I. Joe one, the kid steals a bike, but in the Transformers one, the kid wants to steal a car, he starts to hijack it, and HOLY SHIT IT'S AN AUTOBOT IN DISGUISE! Okay, this premise is genius just on its own. I mean, a kid trying to hijack a car, and it turns out to be tracks in disguise. That is just plain genius. This will definitely make the lesson a lot stronger if you used an Autobot as the thing the kid wants to steal, and the thing the kid wants to steal tells him off for stealing. That's <laughs> just play genius! Remember, running away leads nowhere. Now I know. And knowing is half the battle. Okay, that dove flying in the background. Yeah, I think that's going a bit too far there. Oh, and it's also worth noting, Gem and the Holograms ripped off G.I. Joe as well. Remember, if you have to ride when it's getting dark, have the right equipment. And wear bright clothes. If you have to ride at night, make sure your equipment's right. It helps if you wear light color clothes. Nice bike. Maybe we could borrow it? No, that's stealing. Oh, they'd never notice one little tape missing. No, that would be stealing. Yeah, I know it's Hasbro and everything, but... You could put in a little bit more originality than that, guys. Doing the right thing makes you a superstar. Jam! And now I present to you all with the most epic advert to ever be put on a videotape. Your destination, outer space. Your speed, astronomical. Your closest encounter, asteroids. Between the Earth and the Moon lies the adventure. Space Mountain, the greatest ride in the universe. No fucking kidding. I mean, I was absolutely hyped just from that advert alone. I mean, look at this. The epic choir playing in the background. The dark atmosphere. The imagery. The visuals. It's the music. It's all so epic and... I don't know how squeamish I was as a kid, but this was enough to give me nightmares. I couldn't tell the difference between creepy and epic back then. Seriously, I was so stupid as a kid. And now we're going to wrap things off with some driving PSAs. I mean, how bad can it be? <laughs> what the hell? Why would you show the Ritzy? <laughs> what kind of thought that would be a good idea to show on public TV. This is going to scar people for life. 
This is not going to make anyone want to drive a car again. Let alone not drink while driving or wear a seatbelt or whatever. This is going to scare people. And for all we know, children might be watching this stuff out of pure boredom because their parents don't want them to change the channel because they're watching the telly and not them. <laughs> If you can all excuse me, I'm gonna go marathon the entire Naughty series so I can get all this graphic imagery out of my head.